Shalom, peace and blessings, brothers and sisters. One of the things that the Spirit touched me with was the spirit of Joseph. Many brothers and sisters are dealing with the spirit of Joseph. And what do I mean? I'm talking about the relationships they're having with their earthly parents, their earthly siblings, um, in a spiritual way. Okay, we're going to go into the story of Joseph, all right? We're going to start in chapter 37. Now, Israel loved Joseph more than his all his children because he was the son of his old age, and he made him a coat of many colors. And when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him and could not speak peaceably unto him. And Joseph dreamed a dream, and he told it his brethren, and they hated him yet the more. All right. A lot of us brothers and sisters, when it speaks about Israel loving Joseph, some of us have the favor of the Most High upon us. And our brothers and sisters see it. Even if they don't know what they're looking at, they see that favor and they hate you for it. They hate you for the fact that you're dreaming dreams. They hate you for the fact that you have visions. And many of our earthly siblings cannot and do not speak peaceably to us. Okay? But you have to understand, and sometimes it is very hard for us to understand that, in order for us to get where God intends to take us, this is the journey that we end up taking. This is the journey that we are put on, okay? Now, that was in chapter 37. We're going to the 18th verse, chapter 37. Joseph is looking for his brothers. He can't find them. He goes to a field. When his brothers see him, this is the response. And when they saw him afar off, even before he came near unto them, they conspired against him to slay him. A lot of people don't want to admit it because this system teaches us family first. And yes, you should love your family. But you have to understand that everybody that's in your bloodline is not on your side. They do not wish you well. Okay, we get examples of this in the Bible itself, in the word, in the sefer. Okay, they wanted to kill him. Some of us right now, we're trying to walk this walk with God. And a lot of people, well, that's your family. You should stand by them. Let me tell you something. If you got family members, and many of us do, that they wish you no good. As a matter of fact, they laid snares and traps for you. And if they could, they would take your very life. Why? Because they're jealous. Because they're hateful. And just like Israel favored Joseph, some of us, we have the favor of the Most High God. And instead of our brothers and sisters trying to live right and do right on their own, because God actually, he is a respecter of no man. If a person lives right and does those things that God requires of him, the favor of God is for all who follow and love his statutes, laws, and commands. Okay, but Joseph's brethren, because of Jacob, they couldn't see beyond their own anger, their own hatred. Okay, so much so, they wanted to slay him. They were conspiring. Now, sometimes when it speaks about slaying you, it doesn't always mean just literally. Some people want to destroy your home. They want to destroy your relationships, your marriage. They will even go so far as to try to figure out how to get you fired from your job. They want to kill everything that makes you who you are. Okay? Now, verse 19 said, And they said one to another, Behold, this dreamer cometh. Some people, they want to kill your dreams. They want your dreams to die. And it's a struggle because the people that's supposed to love you, the people that's supposed to support you, these are the people that are doing it. These are the people that are doing it. 
Okay, so you have to keep your eyes open, brothers and sisters. Sometimes we're living through a separation, and we don't always know why. But remember, God has a divine plan, a divine order for your life. Okay, we go down to verse 20 in chapter 37. Come now, therefore, and let us slay him and cast him into some pit, and we will say some evil beast has devoured him. And we shall see what will become of his dreams. Okay. Understand. I've known it. I've had people that lie on you. They will still, they will do everything in their power to destroy your dream. Instead of following their own dream, instead of working on their own vision, their goal becomes to keep you from reaching yours. They are, they want to be the destroyer in your life. Okay. Now, when we get to verse 21 of chapter 37, and Reuben heard it, and he delivered him out of their hands and said, let us not kill him. Normally, you're going to find, be it a brother, a sister, a friend, a family member, a neighbor, there's always a person that God's going to put in your life. This message. Is for somebody who is experiencing this right now because God is always going to put somebody in your life to stop the enemy's attack from being fruitful. <clears throat> when the enemy comes in like a flood, he raises up a standard against him. Now, understand altogether, jo Jacob had 12 sons, 10 of them are out in the field. Joseph is number 11. Benjamin's home because he's small. He's very young right now. Okay, so when the enemy comes in like a flood, we know nine of the ten that are out there are in agreement to destroy Joseph. Only Reuben is trying to ensure that they don't take Joseph's life from him. Normally, God always puts somebody, some situation. He makes a way out of nowhere. Okay. In Joseph's case, at that time, it was Reuben. Reuben, who was the voice of reason. Reuben, who was the one that was his defense. Reuben, unbeknownst to Joseph, was working on his behalf because God was touching Reuben's heart. He was giving Reuben the ability of speech to reason with his brothers, to get them to listen to him, okay? We know as we go further in, that they sold him. They sold him as a slave. And what does that represent? Some of our own family members sell us out. They will sell us out to an enemy, to a situation that should never have come upon our lives. Some of us are experiencing feelings of betrayal, feelings of um, abandonment. They abandoned me. They, there was no love for me. How could they give me to these men and send me far away from everything I know, from everything I love? But remember, Reuben was the voice of reason. Now, Reuben went off, and during that time, they sold him into slavery. And again, this is symbolic of the fact, whether you like it or not, okay, you can hallelujah all day long and be good and be forgiving. But. At the same time, you have to be wise and understand there's nothing wrong with your mind. Some of your own family members will set you up. They will set you up. They want to destroy your dreams. Some of them want to take your life. When they can't do that within reason, they'll sell you out to an enemy. They will sell you out to an enemy. But you still got to remember during this entire time, the favor of God was on Joseph's life. The favor of God was still upon him. Okay? Let's go further into the chapter. Okay? Once Joseph is sold, okay? Once Joseph is sold, God is blessing Joseph. Even though he's working in the Egyptian's house and his master's house, the master is experiencing prosperity. Joseph is so wise, so skillful, that he sets Joseph charge over his house. The anointing of God is all over Joseph. Now, his master, the one in charge of him at the time, Potiphar, Potiphar had a wife. His wife looked upon Joseph. And she wanted to lie with Joseph. But Joseph, being an honorable man, a God-fearing man, 
He would not touch her. Okay? He would not touch her. A lot of times, brothers and sisters, when the anointing of God is upon you, it is attracting. It is attracting. Okay? And a lot of people don't even know what they're looking at. Okay? Um, I'm going to Genesis chapter 39, verse 6. We're talking about Potiphar. He left all that he had in Joseph's hand. And he knew not he had saved the bread which he did eat. And Joseph was a goodly person and well favored. So he didn't, the Potiphar didn't even know all that he had. That's how much he trusted Joseph. And Potiphar was being blessed because the anointing that was on Joseph was overflowing in his house. And it came to pass after these things that his master's wife cast her eyes upon Joseph. And she said, lie with me. But he refused. He refused. Now, the woman already knowing that she's married. She goes after Joseph. When Joseph refuses her, she snatches his clothes off her, off of him. Okay, when nobody's around. Then she holds his garment up to make as though he tried to rape her. Okay, you got many people that will lie on you. They will lie on you. After bringing all this good, after bringing all this blessing, after being honest, after being honorable, this is what the wife does. In some cases, husbands do it to the friend. You could be a female and somebody you work for, their husband is coming after you. Okay, it can be a family member's husband. You're trying to be honest and honorable or a family member or a friend's wife. You're trying to do the right thing, but they see that anointing that they consider an attractiveness. They don't know it's the anointing of God. They're going to break their vows. They don't care. And the more honorable you become, the more honorable you show yourself to be, the more they come after you. You become a target for them. But understand, that doesn't change the fact that that blessing is still at work. The blessing is still at work. She lied on Joseph, okay? She calls her servants in, and this is what she says. We're in chapter 39, verse 14. That she called unto the men of her house and spake unto them, saying, See, he hath brought in an Hebrew unto us to mock us. He came in unto me to lie with me, and I cried with a loud voice. And it came to pass, when he heard that I lifted up my voice and cried, that he left his garment with me and fled and got him out. And she laid up his garment by her until his Lord came home. And she spoke unto him according to these words, saying, The Hebrew servant which thou brought into unto us came in unto me to mock me. And it came to pass, as I lifted up my voice and cried, that he left his garment with me and fled out. And it came to pass, when his master heard the words of his wife, which she spake unto him, saying, After this manner did thy servant unto me, that he his wrath was kindled. And Joseph's master took him and put him in the prison. Okay, now we're going to verse 21. We're still in chapter 39. But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy, and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. All right? Now, here's a woman. You got to look at it, because people in our lives, this is happening. You're not crazy. You're doing the right thing. You're not doing the wrong thing. You're doing the right thing. And when they can't get you to commit evil with them, they will lie on you to the point that they cause you to lose your job. Joseph wasn't working anymore. He gets locked up on a lie. But God was with him. He's with him. You got to look at the whole story. His brothers sold him off. They Originally, they wanted to kill him. One of them, because there's always a person in your life that's going to intercede because God is touching them. He's using them, okay, to keep that enemy from fulfilling his desire. Okay, while bringing you into your blessing, while still making sure that you fulfill the mission, the, the, the thing that God has for you to do. Okay, now Joseph's in prison because of a lie. Okay, Joseph wouldn't even have been in that house had his brothers not lied. Oh, they lied because they sold him for a slave. The people didn't know he was their brother. You got people in your life that will lie. Family. 
that will lie on you and sell you to your enemy. God sees this. He hears this. He knows this. And sometimes, brothers and sisters, while we're being blessed, while the favor of the Most High is upon us, we can be going through turmoil as the whirlwind comes down. And we don't always understand it. We don't always understand it. But God's favor is still working. Be encouraged, brothers and sisters. Let's go on. Okay. We know that while in prison, Joseph was interpreting dreams, the butler, the uh, baker. We also know that he won the favor of Pharaoh by interpreting Pharaoh's dreams, seven years of plenty, uh, and then seven years of famine. He saved Egypt. He saved Egypt. So much so that his own brothers came down having to buy food and provisions. Okay. Now, here's what's interesting. By the time his brother saw him again, Joseph has been gone 17 years, basically 17 years when they see him again. All right. But God's been working and working and working in Joseph's life. All right. When we get to Genesis chapter 42, verse 8, and Joseph knew his brethren, but they knew him not. Okay. Joseph knew his brethren, but they knew not him. All right. What does that mean? A lot of us in our family, we know our family, but they don't know us. They don't recognize us. They don't recognize where God has brought us from, where God has taken us to, what God has put on us. Just because your mother, your father, your sisters, your brothers, your aunts, uncles, cousins, friends, neighbors don't see the anointing doesn't mean that anointing isn't there. So much so that when they finally got to Egypt, Joseph knew who they were, but they didn't recognize Joseph. It's not just because Joseph's in all of that grand guard, because by now he's second only to Pharaoh in power. Okay, It's not because he has on Egyptian clothing. Joseph's spirit, the man Joseph became. Joseph was so handsome. You know, when the anointing is on you, when you're living right, the power, the transformational power of God is working. Some of us, we see people that we grew up with, we're the same age as they are. And somehow you, you look at them and go, my God, I mean, other than an extreme sickness, you wonder what happened. You, you, you barely recognize them. Okay, one of the reasons for that is how you've been living. How you've been living. How are you living? When the favor of God is on you, when you're doing the best you can, God will anoint even your features, your stature, your manners. Okay, Joseph knew them, but they didn't know Joseph. And you got to understand the depths of that statement. He knew the type of persons they were. They didn't understand Joseph. They didn't even know Joseph. I don't believe when he was with him. If they did, they would have understand for, understood first of all. Even when he spoke, maybe Joseph was bragging. He was young. He was young. Telling his brothers and his father the dreams he had had. They surely wouldn't have plotted to kill him, let alone selling him into slavery. Their own brothers. His own brothers. But. Here it is, 17 years later, he's second only to Pharaoh. When they come, Joseph recognizes them, but they don't recognize him. He saves his father's house. And eventually, Jacob, by now called Israel, comes down. He lives in uh, Egypt, in the land of Goshen, because this famine is severe. Okay? This famine is severe. After a period of time, Israel dies. After they bury Israel, his brothers look at Joseph. And this is what they say. We're in Genesis chapter 50, verse 15. And when Joseph's brethren saw that their father was dead, they said, Joseph will peradventure hate us and will certainly requite us all the evil which we did unto him. Okay, and they sent a messenger unto Joseph, saying, Thy father did command before he died, saying, So shall you say unto Joseph, Forgive, I pray thee now, 
the trespass of thy brethren and their sin. For they did unto thee evil, and now we pray thee, forgive the trespass of the servants of the God of thy father. And Joseph wept when they spake unto him. Remember early, Joseph knew them, but they didn't recognize him. First of all, we don't read anywhere in the scripture where before Israel died, Jacob, that he told them to say that. Joseph. But remember, we know they're liars. We already know they're liars because all the way back when they were out in that field and they determined to sell him instead of killing him, they sold him for a slave. So we know they're a lie. We know they will lie on him and to him, okay? Because when Joseph first came, at some point they had to act reasonable enough for them to get close enough to him to do what they did. Okay, now we're going to go down to Genesis chapter 50, verse 18. And his brethren also went and fell down before his face. And they said, behold, we be thy servants. God is going to bring your enemies to their feet, to their feet. Excuse me, I'm sorry, to your feet. Okay, not to exalt you in a, in a manner like, yeah, yeah. No, no, to bring that truth to pass, okay, that blessing is going to come in its fullness, okay, they're going to confess and see, this is of God, all right, and Joseph said unto them, fear not, for I, for am I in the place of God, remember, Joseph wasn't doing this, Joseph did not do this, now we're still in Genesis chapter 50, we're going to the 20th verse, but as for you, Ye thought evil against me. He's talking to his brother. But God meant it unto good to bring to pass as it is this day to save much people alive. Now we're back. Uh, Genesis 50, chapter, verse 20. But as for you, you thought evil against me. But God meant it unto good to bring to pass as it is this day to save much people alive. Those things. That your family means evil against you. God will turn it unto good. God will use it for your good. But as for you, you thought evil against me. But God meant it unto good. God meant it unto good. Brothers and sisters, we be on a journey. This is this, this road, this journey that God takes us on. We don't always know why. But over time, God will reveal it to us. So if you're going through something with your family, and many of us do, if you're going through that period of separation, you need that separation in order for God to work his powerful work in you, to get you by yourself, to cause you to see who you are, what he wants to do with you. It's a heartbreaking thing to have your family turn on you. But you got to understand a broken spirit. God can mold a broken spirit. He can come in a broken heart. You can hear him. It catch you by yourself. So don't think it's strange. And yes, I know it hurts to be betrayed by your own family. To have them turn on you. Some of them want to see you die. Some of them literally seek your life. They want to destroy your dreams, your goals, your aspirations. You may have reached your dreams and some of your goals, and they lied. They lied. Remember, his brothers lied on him. They were even lying after his father died. I told him, my father said, please forgive us. Okay? But remember, when they first came into Egypt, Joseph knew them, but they didn't recognize him. They did not know him. Okay? You have to understand. As God is molding us, as God is taking us on this journey. And remember, in the end, uh, Joseph told him, even though you meant it for evil, God used it unto good. He put him in that position to save much people. The awakening is going on, brothers and sisters. God may have to get you by yourself because there are a whole lot of people who don't know who they are. There are a whole lot of people that are going through a whole lot of spiritual issues right now, okay? And there could be something about you, you specifically, that God's going to use to save much people. 
You may be that little David that's getting ready to take down a Goliath, okay? He may be using you. And even in David's case, his brethren were not always friendly toward him, okay? Just because your mother, your father, your aunt, uncle, grandparents, your brothers, your sisters, your friends, your cousins and neighbors can't see it, it doesn't mean it isn't there. It doesn't mean that the work isn't being done. Remember, first his brothers wanted to kill him. They wanted to destroy his dreams. They lied on him. Sold him into slavery. He's gone for 17 years. He goes and works for a man. The man's wife gets attracted, wants to commit adultery with him. When he won't do it, she lies, says he tried to rape her, gets him thrown into prison two years on a lie. But the favor of God was with him throughout. You also got to understand the changes, the reflection of a person's mind while they having these experiences. When you're going through trouble, it'll definitely get you close to God. It will definitely make you think deep, deep thoughts. So, brothers and sisters, if right now you're in your Joseph, Josephina state, remember, what they meant for your evil, God will use it unto your good and for the good of others. You are not alone. And just like when his brothers meant to slay him, God touched Reuben. Where Reuben spoke in such a manner, he convinced them not to take Joseph's life. There are people in your life that God has speaking on your behalf. Whether you know it or not, they are speaking on your behalf to ensure that your enemy does not prevail against you. To make sure that they don't raise a harmful hand on you. And your dreams, oh those dreams are coming to fruition. They're coming to fruition brothers and sisters. The spirit of Joseph. Yes, brothers and sisters lie on you. You got people you work for. Good work. Good work. Their husbands, their wives lie on you because they can't make you commit evil. Not just against with them, but against God himself. They want to bring you down. They want you to lower yourself to their level. They trying to do something they're not even supposed to do. God's still with you. God's still with you. Can you imagine? Here's this man. He's doing good by this man. The, the, the blessing of God's on the house. Now, the wife got Joseph running around. They get, they're trying to make everybody believe he's a rapist and intent, uh, in a, he attempted rape. you working hard trying to do everything you can. And they want to sully your name. They want to make you look like some low-level nothing. But remember, the favor of God was still with him, still with him. Sisters and brothers, the favor of God is with you in the middle of the storm, right there in the middle of the storm. Because while you're in that storm, you're in the potter's house. You are clay being molded. God is using you. He's positioning you. You may not understand it, but I guarantee you. You are where you are supposed to be. And when that time comes, you're going to be called out just like Joseph was called out of prison. When people remember, wait a minute, I know somebody. I know somebody that can speak a word. I know somebody that's got insight, that's got discernment. And they're going to call you. They're going to call on you. Because what those people meant for your evil God going to use it for your good and not just your good. Remember, the gifts of the Spirit are for the building up of the whole body. For the whole body. He's going to exalt you, brothers and sisters. You're going to be exalted. So if your family turns on you, they lie on you, they try to destroy your dreams. Some of them even try to take your life. They sully your name, try to put you in this. He, she, she tried to lay with my husband. He was trying to rape my wife. God is still in the midst. He's still working. He's still working. He goes in the prison houses, brothers and sisters. He will meet you on the bar. He'll meet you at the bar. He will give you favor no matter where you are. No matter where you are. And remember, just like Reuben spoke to his brothers when they sought to slay him, God always puts a voice there. Somebody who will speak on your behalf. 
whether you know it or not, there's always somebody who's going to speak on your behalf. Even when Joseph was in prison, even when he was in prison, the butler remembered him. The butler started speaking on his behalf. They pulled him out. He goes before Pharaoh. He interprets the dream. He gets risen up. He's raised up. Remember, brothers and sisters. In the middle of the storm, God is still with you. Sometimes it's very hard to understand a blessing. When you, you got tears running down your cheeks, you crying, you don't even understand what's going on. But in the end, God's favor was on you. He exalted His brother had to see him. His brother was still fearing him. But Joseph Having that blessing, having that anointing, he understood what God was doing. He didn't seek revenge. He didn't have to. He didn't need it. You got to understand the whole time they living in Egypt with Joseph. They thinking before their father died, he going to kill her. He going to kill her. He just wait. He just wait. They living in fear. They were in bondage. The bondage they put him in, they were in bondage in their minds, in their hearts, in their spirits. Okay. And the only person that could set them free from that bondage was Joseph, the one they had put in bondage. Mm, mm, you reap what you sow. You reap what you sow. You don't have to raise your hand, brothers and sisters. There's somebody speaking on your behalf. And God's favor is at work even in the middle of the storm. So if your family turns on you, if they lie on you, they try to destroy your dreams, they even try to kill you. Remember, but then they sell you out. They sell you out. That doesn't change the fact the anointing God's power, his favor is in your life. It's in your life. And he's going to complete exactly what he purposed to do in your life. God's got a calling on some people's lives. God's got a ministry on some people's lives. He got a mission for you. And it may be hard to recognize because it's coming in the middle of a storm, in the middle of a storm, but there's a still small voice that will speak to you, that will keep you, that will comfort you, that will guide you, brothers and sisters. So, during your years of separation, during your time of separation from your family, like Joseph, God never separates. He never leaves nor forsakes us. You be encouraged. Because a lot of times to bring us to where we're supposed to be, he's got to set us apart. You got to get set apart so that he can work that perfect work. Okay? And you are not alone. Remember, Reuben spoke to save his life. The butler remembered Joseph when he got before that pharaoh. Favor was on. Favor was on. And it came to pass what they meant for his evil God used it for his good and the good of others and the good of others brothers and sisters I got family right now that if they could I'd either be crazy dead I surely wouldn't be on here encouraging anybody I would and I know my heart got scars and wounds all over it footprints and daggers but more than anything it's got the seal of the Most High God. It's got the seal of the Most High God, brothers and sisters, because it's circumcised. Loving him and his word, and loving my family, loving you, the Confederate House of Israel, and all those who follow the ways of the Most High. You be encouraged. You're not alone. And what they meant for your evil, God's going to use it for your good the good of others and the good of others and somebody is speaking on your behalf yes they are you may not see it you may not hear it, but somebody is speaking on your behalf so if you're experiencing the bondage of joseph the sorrow of joseph you just remember the end of the matter was far better than the beginning of the matter be blessed be encouraged peace